Uh, what? 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 It's Thursday? Oh my god. After those last few episodes, I must have overdosed on going second juice and passed out at my desk. God, I had such a terrible dream that Konami replaced Time Thieves with some unplayable TCG garb. What the hell is a dream mirror? Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back again with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. It's been one week since a TMT, and I've returned to slake your thirst for steaming Tronian goodness with the most powerful, most consistent, most tier zero deck of the new format! A deck to thrash thunder, a deck to guillotine gar dragon, a deck to... uh... Beat Sky Striker? More powerful than Teledad. More sticky than Spiral. The rightful heir to the Time Thief throne. Dream Mirror? So here's the list and ah yes, welcome to my new apartment. You can't tell, but right off screen there are piles of garbage I have yet to put away. In the meantime, may I direct your attention to the pile of garbage on the screen. I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Dream Mirror are... Oh god. I'm gonna have to do ten minutes of this. Okay, just repeat your mantra, Joseph. Anything for the ad revenue. Dream Mirror are a series of monsters that took Time Thief's territory for the currently supported TCG exclusive archetype. These dark and light type monsters... Dang! What an innovative combination for Yu-Gi-Oh! Are mirrored versions of each other filtered through a field spell. In short, they can be your angle. Or your devil. The ideal way to play the archetype is to use the Squires, the dark and light forms of Ekelos, to add a Dream Mirror monster to your hand, then special summon it, using Light Morpheus to play defense before tagging out to go on the O with Dark Morpheus. On paper, they seem like a self-sustaining archetype with an extremely consistent access to a reasonable power play. Unfortunately, their game plan seems to only work in Dreamland. In reality, their effects are hampered by one inconvenient interaction. Their specific forms can only activate provided the opposite mirror is on the field. Now, there are a few ways we can mitigate this downside. The mirrors do possess the ability to tag into each other from deck at end phase, but that process is so slow you're unlikely to ever assemble a board of more than a single Dark Morpheus. And in a format where you can legally play three Dark Destroyer, why would you play his cousin who dropped out of middle school? What's worse, Light Morpheus is effectively no payoff at all. Even if you're jumping through the hoops required to proc his protection, betting on a big butt to keep you alive isn't smart in a format full of nightmare unicorns, and the deck provides no offensive pressure unless you give it up regardless. In short, the monsters are bloated, but with irrelevant effects, slow insofar as they require multiple mirrors, and don't have a payoff unless you decide a single Derident is doing it for you. We've built the deck with as many staples as possible, so there can be no question how underwhelming it is to proceed through the looking glass. So with that, let's get into the card by card. We've got three Dark Morpheus, who pops a card on summon and can tag out under Light Mirror for our next monster, Light Morpheus. This 1000 attack point boss monster can prevent destruction of itself on summon via activated effect, by the way, don't want to give it ogre protection. It also tags into Dark Morpheus under Dark Mirror. After that is Dark Echelos, which special summons a Dream Mirror from hand, provided it was special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, and under Light Mirror tags into Light Echelos, which adds a Dream Mirror if specialed by a Dream Mirror and tags into Dark Echelos under Dark Field. Got it? Don't worry if you're confused, you're never going to see these cards in real life. After that is three Ash Blossom and three Valor, followed by a one-for-one, one, three Extravagance, Terraforming, Duality, since you can port into Morphs on either turn, Set Rotation, since we're on six fields, three Dream Mirror of Terror, which tags into Light at End Phase, should you so desire, and <laughs> deals 300 points of effect damage to your opponent per special summon, provided you have a Dark Dream Mirror monster. And three, Dream Mirror of Joy, which prevents your monsters from being targeted by card effects or attacks, except the one with the highest level, and only if you have a light Dream Mirror on field. Truly the Kamala Harris of protection spells. 
Next are three infinite impermanence, three dream mirror fantasy, an actually reasonable removal spell that is searchable by light Echelos and easy to set up by tagging through fields, and of course, a metaverse. In the extra deck, we're on an extravagance board of three Mega Fleet, three Fortress, three Phoenix, three Linkuri, and three All Mirage. So with that, let's jump into some games. Our first match is up against Dragon Maid, a deck that's going to be responsible for some very interesting custom playmat designs. Imagine the most inappropriate thing your opponent could show up to locals with, and then tell me that these monsters aren't involved. Our hand is fine, we have access to a hand trap and a pot of extravagance, and while we do have the wrong squire with the wrong field, we could turn it into the right one at end phase. I'm not going to do that until the chips are down, however. I don't want to be blown out by a standby phase MST. We're going to activate Pot of Extravagance, and what do we find off the top? But A second Extravagance. Always. Well, our opponent's going to normal summon a copy of Tilru, the Stratos. That prompts an infinite impermanence for us. Afterwards, they're going to go to battle phase and deal 500 points of damage to us, revealing that their deck is just as bad as ours. With that knowledge in mind, we're going to activate Pot of Extravagance. They'll ash us, and I figure the chips are probably down. Let's activate Dream Mirror of Joy and normal summon Light Akelos. We're going to tag into Dream Mirror of Terror so we can actually proc the effects. Our opponent's going to normal summon a copy of Parla and shoot, they now have access to the big boys. We're going to tag out into a copy of Dark Akelos, special summoning a copy of Light Morpheus from our hand. Afterwards, we'll deal 300 points of damage to our opponent's life points. Wow, that's not useless at all. And they'll go into Phoenix, shutting off our entire game plan. We'll tag into Dark Akelos, which at the very least allows us to clear our opponent's board, but unfortunately they have a World Chalice Gar Dragon. We'll draw for turn, we find a Light Akelos, we'll normal summon it to go to Phoenix, I suppose, we're completely out of plays. Unfortunately, we're only just going to be able to get over our opponent's monster, anything is going to beat us at this point. For turn, our opponent draws a copy of Flamme, they'll normal summon a copy of Nasseri, they'll special summon a copy of Tilru, then special summon a copy of Destrudo, what are they- wait, what- are you kidding me? This is a Gar Dragon deck? Yikes. Okay, they'll go into Agrapan, then activate LP to get a copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and bring back Flamme. I guess Battle is one way to clear out the Agrapan zone. They'll deal a fair amount of damage to us before in main phase 2, special summoning a copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss to the Agrapan zone and passing it back. For turn, we draw a copy of a removal spell that's way too late, we'll set it and concede. While the last game did a good job of showcasing what happens if you run out of field spells too early, this game does a good job of showcasing what happens if you take just a little bit too long to find squires. Thankfully our opponent's on the weather painters, so we have a fair amount of time before we're beaten into a bloody pulp. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, and what are the chances our extravagance draws are bad two games in a row? Oh, zero actually. A Pot of Duality is exactly what we want. We find Negation off the top, but not a Squire, which means we're going to set two and then go Terror Joy, Joy Terror, I suppose to entertain ourselves, thin the deck, however you want to justify it. Our opponent does not have a Snowy, they have a Thundery, which means we are going to get a plus off of activating cards like Infinite Impermanence, but also that the clock is ticking, provided they can continue to find superfluous canvases. For turn, we draw a Dream Mirror of Joy. So much for thinning the deck, I suppose. They find a rainy weathery pattern and trigger the effect of the thundery weather painter again. Thankfully, we do have a copy of Effect Veiler, but now we absolutely have to find action, and instead we find a big chonker. Our opponent draws Cloudy off the top, probably the best remaining draw on their deck. They'll activate Magic Planter on their copy of Rainbowy Canvas, reborning two canvases and then tagging out for Snowy. This effectively ends the game, that allows them to search a copy of Painter Snow to hand, and next turn they intend to pop off. We do find a copy of Extravagance off the top, and could this be what brings us back into the game? Oh my god, it is. We find the exact correct Dream Mirror monster. We're going to Light Morpheus off of our Squire, and then Dark Morpheus off of our Light Morpheus, popping our opponent's set card before going to Dream Mirror of Joy, so we can proc the effect of the Dark Squire as well. We'll proc the effect of the Light Squire to find the Disruptive Battle Trap, and try and chew through these effects that have been given by these continuous spells and traps. Finally, we get to actually destroy Sun, set one card, and tag into Terror at end phase. Our opponent draws for turn. They're going to activate the effect of both Weather Painter Thunder and Weather Painter Cloud. We get to do 300 points of damage each time. Unfortunately, our opponent's going to be able to set Thundery Canvas right now because of the effect of Sun, which we destroyed. Should have seen that coming. We do get to special summon one remaining Dark Morpheus, but our opponent is able to tag out into a copy of Aura in response, protecting their spells and traps. 
They're going to attack. We're able to prevent this copy of Thundery from bouncing this copy of Dark Morpheus, but our opponent is going to take damage because, of course, they can use the effect of Rainy. They're going to attack directly with this copy of Cloudy Canvas, and shoot, I'm at such a low life point total, I don't think I can actually beat this over the course of the next turn. They're going to bring back, oh, not five monsters. Christ, once this deck gets rolling, I swear. Well, we have a one-for-one. One. We have a set rotation. We can activate Dream Mirror of Joy, then activate the effect of the Dark Squire. Our opponent's going to chain the effect of Weather Painter Snow to return our field spell, but it's a little late for that. When we activate Light Squire, they're going to activate Ghost Ogre. Ah, this one disruptive battle trap is not going to be enough to survive until the next turn, I don't think. They're going to be able to summon a copy of Weather Painter Snow as well and return our remaining monsters to the hand, which I think is good enough to prove that we're dead. Alright, so it's time for game three and... Oh, I can't do it anymore. Oh, I'm burnt out. The games are too long. They're too painful. Do you really need a best of three versus meta to know that this archetype that couldn't be dragon maids is incompetent? Let's do a best of one. It's all I can handle right now. Our opponent's playing Pendulum. They're going first. Our hand, as always, is unplayable. All big Morpheus. No Squires. No Field Spells. No chance of victory. Our opponent's going to set Mythical Institution and Master Cerberus. We'll Ash the Master Cerberus, I suppose. They'll activate Spell Power Control and set a copy of Servant before... Oh my god. The scales! We won?! So, we're back with the deck, and I don't know. I think it actually puts up a convincing argument versus meta. <laughs> Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's unique at the very least. Well, I mean, sure, the chaos bosses with multiple forms isn't exactly unique. And okay, field spell cycling is basically just FA's gimmick. And alright, squires and bosses is really just monarch territory, but no deck has done them together. And that's what counts, right? Two, the trap card is incredibly searchable, and it's almost always on. I mean, it's not game-winning or anything, but that's got to count for something, right? And three, the, uh... Um... Ooh, I got it. Uh, they're all named Morpheus, so you can do Hannibal Burris' Rap Fit from Eric Andre if you're playing them. And the cons. One, the field spell gimmick is a huge detriment. It means that not only do they occasionally lose to mismanagement of the field spell, the whole deck completely folds to a friggin' MST. Two, you are never going to be able to meaningfully disrupt a meta deck. I mean, sheesh, look at how much interaction Dragon Link can play through. And here you are trying to flex a single target destruction spell that happens on a new chain link and one trap. And that's nowhere near enough. And you'll be eaten alive long before you can pop off. And three, the deck mounts no offensive pressure whatsoever. I mean, it'd be different if the payoff manifested in reasonable removal or boards full of bunguses, but as of now, you have the choice of either sitting on a defense position monster with a medium level of protection or sitting on an attack position monster with exactly zero. All in all, I mean, it's interesting, I guess. I'm sure people are going to defend it by saying, oh, there's not enough cards to make a compelling case, but truthfully, I have no idea what could be released to resolve these deep issues central to the archetype's identity. So, that's that. While I appreciate all of my viewers, a special shout-out to my patrons, especially Colin Whalen, Michael Salmior, Distrin, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Second, Left Tenant Labcoat, MeepMoto27, Adrian Bra, Isaac Jackson, and Ace Enigma. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash mbtygo every Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.